if you scuba dive, you don't want to turn into a can of soda. Let me explain. Hey everybody, Organized Biology here, and today we're talking about the bends, or what happens when you go up from scuba diving too quickly. So to illustrate it, we need to know how soda works, or pop from wherever the heck you come from in the country or world. Um, but a can of soda, you don't like it being flat, right? It just tastes really nasty and there's no bubbliness to it, right? So what our manufacturers do is they take this flat soda with all the sugar and what they do is they take a lot of the carbon dioxide in a tank and they force it into the soda under a lot of pressure. So they pressurize this gas of carbon dioxide and they force it into the liquid. Now this is abnormal because usually gases don't like to dissolve in liquids. It's really difficult for them to do that. But under enough pressure, the gas can actually begin to dissolve and associate within the fluid itself. So once again, after going through the pressurization and the sealing process, all that carbon dioxide will get trapped inside of the soda itself. And so all the gas is kind of dissolved in the soda. This is called hypersaturation or we're hypersaturating this fluid with a bunch of carbon dioxide gas. Now we know that gases and basically any fluid likes to go from its high concentration to its low concentration. So let me ask you this, when you open the can of soda, where does the gas want to go? Well, obviously if it's in super high concentration inside the soda, and we learned from my previous video about partial pressures here that the atmosphere has very little carbon dioxide outside of it. So the carbon dioxide in the soda wants to escape. Now you know this happens because when the carbon dioxide escapes, it makes that sound, right? That's CO2 leaving the soda. And if you leave it out for long enough, obviously more and more of that CO2 will leave, more and more of the CO2 will leave, and therefore the soda will become flat once again because all the CO2 left. So what does this have to do with the bends in scuba diving? Well, underneath every one of these scenarios, I'm going to draw what happens when we go at different depths under the water. So I'm gonna draw these diagrams right now. All right, so we've got Ben right here and he is going to get the bends. So with my analogy with the soda, right? I want you to imagine that Ben is the can and his bloodstream is the soda itself. Now the difference between that is that the CO2 in the soda is going to be contrasted with nitrogen gas that's going to get into Ben's blood. Now why nitrogen gas? Well, nitrogen is the most common gas in our atmosphere. In fact, if you were to measure the pressure pushing down on Ben by nitrogen, it would equate to around 600 millimeters of mercury. So that's a pretty good amount of pressure. But the thing with nitrogen is that it really doesn't dissolve very well under normal atmospheric conditions. So in the blood, there's going to hardly be any nitrogen gas. So I'm gonna represent that by just a couple pink dots. So not a lot of nitrogen. Now with nitrogen, however, when you dive deep into the ocean, represented by this purple line, yes, I don't have a blue marker, I apologize. But anyway, as it gets down lower, you see there's a lot more nitrogen gas that is actually pushing down on Ben. Right? So, if our pressure was 600, now it can get up to approximately 2,500 millimeters of mercury of nitrogen. Now, that's a lot more pressure pushing down on Ben. Now, remember, that is just like the soda. When we actually pressurized that soda with CO2, a lot of carbon dioxide got into the soda. Well, in this case, now nitrogen, instead of being poorly dissolved, we're actually going to dissolve a fair bit of nitrogen in Ben's blood. Now, this is not lethal in and of itself. In fact, a little bit of nitrogen can dissolve well in the blood. It doesn't make your blood bubbly at all. So we, he won't have any problems actually getting down pretty far. Now, if he went much further, then it would be a problem. But he's fine at the moment. But the problem becomes when he begins to come up for air. So let's say Ben decides that he's going to swim all the way back up here very, very, very quickly. So now he's gone from an environment of 2,500 millimeters of mercury, and now he's, say, to, back to that 600 at the surface. But the thing is, is his bloodstream is relatively concentrated with that nitrogen. So this becomes a problem. Because once he comes up to a very low amount of nitrogen coming from a high amount, where does all the nitrogen in his blood want to go? Well, all of that nitrogen in his blood will actually want to get out of his body. And the thing with that is that beforehand, it was dissolved well. It didn't bubble his blood at all. But once he gets to this point, as the nitrogen begins leaving, it begins leaving as bubbles. Which means inside of his blood, there's going to be these little bubble pockets filled with nitrogen gas. 
that is a problem because that could cause several blood vessels to actually burst. It could cause strokes and aneurysms and all sorts of bad uh, pathologies. Just like when you open that can of soda, all of that CO2 that was compressed in the fluid of the soda left really quickly. And if you leave it open for a long period of time, eventually all the bubbles will get out. So what Ben should do is that he should have swam to say here first because then the pressure will still be relatively high. We'll say it's at like, I don't know, 1500. And that will allow the nitrogen gas to slowly leave his bloodstream, not as bubbles, but it leaves slow enough where it doesn't form these big pockets of gas bubbles. Whereas if you went straight up, all of that gas that was compressed will leave immediately, it'll degas, and he'll bubble his blood and likely suffer from some sort of dangerous stroke. By the way, if this has been helpful so far, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I'll make a lot more videos like this. Now, all of this is related to gas exchange from the outside environment into the bloodstream, which is a vitally important thing in any anatomy physiology course. So I highly, highly recommend that you hop over to this video here on how carbon dioxide and oxygen are actually transported properly in the bloodstream.